Hi students, Logan Phillips here. All right, today we're gonna to be dealing with SimNet's Excel Chapter 5. Now the point of this chapter is gonna be working with consolidating and linking data and inserting objects into our spreadsheets. Now we do have some learning outcomes that we are gonna be accomplishing through this chapter and through the guided project that we'll be working on. First, we're gonna create a static data consolidation. We're gonna create a dynamic data consolidation. We're gonna consolidate data by category. We're gonna group worksheets for editing and formatting. We're going to link workbooks to consolidate the data. We're going to insert some illustrations using our smart art, screenshots, and pictures. We're also going to insert some hyperlinks, and we're going to safeguard work by making a final setting and a password protection. Because, you know, if you're working Excel and databases, protecting the information is extreme importance. If you're in the medical field, we have HIPAA laws. If you're in education fields, uh, FERPA and HIPAA and all those type of different things that demand how you actually uh, secure your data. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about that today. So let's go ahead and jump into SimNet, go find our project, get the download process started, and go from there. So to start off with, I'm gonna open up our SimNet environment. On the left-hand side, I am gonna choose our projects, and then I'm gonna go through here, and I'm looking for chapter five. So let's go just do a quick search, chapter five. It looks like we have this is our two independent chapters, our projects. So let's just go back and look at it again. Three, three, four, independent, independent. Looks like we only have independent projects for chapter five. Well, I guess today is a lucky day and we'll walk through a independent project. So let's go ahead and open up independent project, chapter five, five dash four. Now we're gonna be working with three different files here. We have our instruction file. Again, I'm using PC, so I'm gonna download the Windows 2013-16 instructions. We're gonna download our start file, which is for the all Office versions, including Macintosh, Apple, PC. And we're also gonna have its resource file. Now you should have learned in previous projects that the resource file will come as a zipped file. So we'll need to download the zip file and uncompress it so we can actually use the documents inside of it. So let's go ahead and download each of these individual pieces. Again, I am using a split screen, uh, so my instruction file will be on the right-hand side where you cannot see, and you'll be seeing the screen that I'm actually doing the work on. So it's always best to print off your start file, or I'm sorry, print off your instruction file and follow along with my commands. So let's go ahead and open these up, our instruction file, our start file, and I'm going to pull up the independent project 5-4 resources and I'm gonna move those to my desktop. So I'm gonna go into my zip file, into that particular file, and our resource is WHES. So let's just move that to our desktop real quick. WHES, and we can close that down. Remember, you cannot work from inside of a zip file on these type of assignments. Now we've downloaded it, we've opened up our start file. We're gonna go ahead and click our enable editing button. And as always, I'm gonna go into my backstage view file and I'm going to choose to save as and I'm going to move this from my downloads folder into my uh, desktop and I'm going to do file save as this PC browse I'm going to find my desktop on the uh, file management system on the left hand side I'm going to leave the name as is and I'm going to hit save and right, so we have a good opening start file uh, let's open up our instructions see what type of command we are expected to do now, I do apologize, uh, my allergies are acting up, so if I sound a little muted or uh, start sneezing, uh, it might happen. Uh, uh, we'll work through it, because I want you guys to learn some stuff. All right, so Independent Project 5-4 is what we're working on. We have some skills that we're gonna be covered that align with our learning outcomes I talked about at the beginning. We're gonna group and format worksheets. We're gonna create a static data consolidation with our sum function. We're gonna create a dynamic data consolidation with our average function. We're gonna insert a picture from a file, which is that WHES we just downloaded and opened up. We're gonna insert a hyperlink. Remember a hyperlink is a link to a website or to a document, a link to somewhere else. And then we're gonna copy that hyperlink and move it over. So let's put this uh, instructions file to my right screen. I'm just moving it over, minimize this browser. And now we have our starting document. It looks like we have some tabs down at the bottom, cash flow, Peoria, Champagne, Roxford, and averages. So we're gonna group and modify these different documents to do the type of stuff we need. Uh, so the very first step, we're opening it up and we've hit enable button. We've already taken care of that. And we've renamed it and saved it to our desktop. So we are done with step one. Now step two, we're gonna group 
the tabs on the bottom. We're going to group the cash flow, Peoria, Champaign, and Rockford. Now, the reason we do grouping is because once things are grouped, if you change something on one sheet, it changes them on all the grouped sheets. So to do this, I'm going to come down, I'm going to click on cash flow. I'm going to use my control button and my left mouse click, and I'm going to click on the other tabs. And you can see here now they're all pulled forward and they're grouped. What this does, if I make a modification here or insert a formula, it will change into that exact cell on all of these tabs. So if I come in on to cell C1 and I type in Logan is awesome. Now I'll delete this in a second. I just want to see what's going on here. When I come into my other tabs now, Logan is awesome is on every single one of my uh, sheets. Let's go ahead and delete that and get rid of it. So we're grouping these so that we can make modifications to multiple sheets at the same time. This saves on that workflow. So that way we're not going into one sheet, making all the modifications, and then going to the second sheet and doing the exact same process again. It just speeds things up and it makes sure that everything is uh, not unanimous, but uh, level across the board. Everything's exactly the same. So we're on to step three. We're going to edit and format our grouped sheets here. We're going to select cells A2 and B2, so let's come up here and choose cell A2. I'm going to use my control button or my shift button, and I'm going to use right arrow, A2 and B2. And we are going to modify A2 and B2, and we're going to click the launcher in the alignment group. So let's go home tab, we got our alignment group, and we're going to open up that dialog box launcher. And that again is the bottom right corner, the little square with the arrow, and we're going to change this to center across selection. So let's align this to center across selection. So let's go here in the horizontal grouping. Let's find center across selection on mine at second from the bottom. And we're going to edit the content to cell A10. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now you can see here, the reason we do a center across selection instead of a merge and center is it allows you to still have these cells. Um, if you do a lot of merging and center, it sort of screws up some stuff every now and then. So you can actually put in data and then arrange it without modifying or merging those cells into one mega cell. So we are on step 3B. We're going to edit the cells of A10. So let's find column A, set 10. And we're going to change it to read cash paid for marketing. So let's go ahead and double click on the cell, highlight the word promotion, and replace it with marketing. Now you could have also came up and clicked in here and typed it in. In fact, I misspelled it, so I will go ahead and do that. And so we have cash paid for marketing. Don't put the period that you're seeing inside the instructions. Only the words in, that are inside red. Next, we're going to select that cell A1. And we're going to ungroup the sheets. So let's go down here to the bottom where our group sheets are. I'm going to right click on the cash flow worksheet and I'm going to choose ungroup sheets. You can see that all my tabs have gone back to regular and now I'm working on only my cash flow worksheet. So let's go ahead to step five and we're going to build a static consolidation for cash flow from the operations section. Now, we're working here with that static consolidation. And the reason we use a static consolidation instead of a dynamic is sometimes we want information pulled out that's based on functions, average, sum, uh, those type of things. But we know the information is not going to change. Like we're looking at the data as is right now, and we want some information from it. So we can pull a static consolidation, which summarizes the data, but it won't change if you change your referenced material. So it is a one-time, one-use. If you're going to change something about the data, you need to update your static consolidation. So we're going to build a static consolidation for the cash flow from the banking and investment section in cells B15. So let's go here to B15 through B21. Through B21. So we're working on these pieces right here. Cash received, cash received, cash received, cash received, other cash received cash paid and other cash paid. So we're working with our cash flow information here and we're gonna create a static flow from this. All 
Okay, so we're going to work on consolidating the information from the set or the tabs Peoria, Champaign, and Roxford into cells B15 through B21. So let's go ahead and highlight those cells B15 through B21. Now to do this, we're going to go up to our data tab in our data tools grouping, and we're going to hit the consolidate. If you haven't anything in the all references, go ahead and delete those, and we're going to start over from scratch. So let's go ahead and click on the references tab, our references area and we're going to click on the tab of Peoria and we're going to highlight cells B15 through B21 and we're going to hit add. We're going to do the same thing to Champaign B15 through B21 add and then Roxford B15 through B21 and hit add. Now once we've hit OK on our cash flow tab you can now see that our data has been consolidated from all the tabs. If we look at cash received from the cells Peoria had zero, Champaign had zero, Roxford had $3,500. So we have 3500 No one had cash from real estate, and we have 1650 from lease agreements. Peoria had 1200 Champagne had nothing, and uh, what is this? Wilson Home had 450 giving us a total of 1650 So it consolidated all the information from these three tabs that are laid out identical into this column or this grouping. So what we've done is built a data or a static consolidation from the cash flow and banking and investment sections. So we're on to step seven here, and we're going to build a static consolidation for the cash balance at the beginning of the quarter amounts in cells B24. So let's go to cash flow. Let's go to cells B and 24, and we're going to create a cash flow from the balance of the quarter for all of these areas. And we're going to use a sum function. So if we click on cell B24, we're going to come up to our data tab, we're going to go into our data tools grouping, we're going to hit consolidate, and we're going to go ahead and delete any of the references that are inside of it. And we're going to start this over from scratch. Click on your references cell, and we're going to go into our Peoria tab, click on cell B24, add, Champagne, add, and Roxford, and add. And let's go hit OK. And what we have here now is 113,564, which is the total between the cells B24 of Peoria, Champaign, and Roxford. And notice that my data didn't change on cells 15 through 21 in the B column. Because this is static, these are locked into place. And so we can now start working on the next step, which is step 8. And we're going to insert a picture from a file. So we have that resource file that we were working on that we unzipped to our desktop. I think it was called something like w, WHES. So we're going to probably insert that particular file. Let me pull up my instructions again real quick. In step eight. So we're going to delete the contents of cell A1 on the cash flow worksheet. So let's go to cash flow. Let's go to cell A1 and hit our delete button. Now it just got rid of that title right there. And we're going to click on cell D2. So let's find cell D and 2. And we're going to click on the pictures button. So let's go insert. We're going to do a picture. And we're going to insert from file. And we're going to select that WHES. Now I put mine on the desktop. So I just got to scroll through here until I find WHES. It is a PNG file. So let's go ahead and insert. So we have Wilson Home Entertainment Systems. We're gonna, now we're going to modify this picture to fit a little bit better into our worksheet. So we're going to modify the height first. So let's go ahead and set this height to a 1.2. So we're going to click on the picture itself, which is going to bring up a new tab, the Picture Tools Format tab. We're going to go to the very right side where the size grouping is. We're going to choose a height. Right now it's a 2.2 inch. We're going to change it to a 1.2 inch. And now we're going to go to the height of row one, and we're going to change it to an 86.25 pixels, or 115 pixels. So basically, we're going to modify this row to fit this picture a little bit better. So let's click on the row. Uh, we're on row one, and we're going to change its height. So I'm going to right-click on the row one. I'm going to choose row height. And right now, we have it at 26.25. And we're going to change it from a 26.25 to an 86.25 and hit OK. So, you know, you can see it expanded that out pretty nicely to about 115 pixels. And next, we're going to move this display or this image into our cell one. So we're going to go to the frame of the picture 
we're going to move our cursor around until it hits the arrows or the moving where it's a, four different arrows. I'm going to hold my cursor down with my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it to where it appears in cell A1 as the main worksheet. So go ahead and I'm just going to drag it to the farthest top left corner I can drag it to and release. There we go. Next, we're going to click on cell D2. So let's go here down to D2. And we're on to step nine. So we've created a nice little uh, logo in here. We resized it using our format tabs and our size. And we moved it around using the moving cursor by left clicking our mouse and moving it into cell A1. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some dynamic consolidation of data. So you can see in the cash flow underneath the cash flow and banking, we had these at like the beginning of the quarter. We really don't want that information to change. That's why we made a static one. I don't care if someone changes the numbers. This is the information that came from that data. So it stays locked into place, nothing modifies. But next we're going to work on a dynamic. That means if something gets changed in my data, that my final numbers will actually update. So if maybe I made a mistake and Billy Bob only bought 1,000 instead of 1,200, I can change Billy Bob's number and it will update my statement of cash flows automatically. So this is called a 3D reference. It connects into our data and it's live updating depending on how we change data. So we're on to step nine here and we're gonna click on the average cash flow and the averages sheet tab. So let's go here to the averages sheet tab. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to select our cells B4. So let's go down here to B4 through B12. I'm going to use my shift and my down arrow, and I'm going to select B4 through B12. You can tell I'm in B4 through B12 because I'm highlighted on B, and I'm highlighted on B on 4 through 12. Now we're going to use the average as the function to consolidate this data, but we're going to do it the exact same way. Let's go into our data tab. Right, so we've selected B4 through B12 in our data tab here, or in our sheet of averages. So we're going up to our data tab. We're going to come into our data tools, and we are going to create a dynamic consolidation. And we're going to use average as the function. So let's go ahead and click on our consolidate. We're going to choose function of average, and we are going to choose the data from Peoria, Champagne, and Roxford sheets with a link to the source data. So here's what we're gonna do on the bottom of the thing in our very bottom of this dialog box, we're gonna make sure that create link to source data is selected. We're gonna come up to our references. We're gonna go first to Peoria, and this is cells B4 through B12. So let's go Peoria, B4 through B12. And we're gonna add that. We're gonna come over to Champagne, do the same thing, add it together. And Roxford, do the same thing and add it together. Now make sure that you have selected create links to the source data and hit OK. You can see here now I got 5,910, 12,883, 9717, 500, 188, and 130. Okay, on our step 9D, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to recreate this process once again, but we're going to do it inside the cash flow for the banking investment and the cash balance at the beginning of the quarter. So let's go ahead and select cells B32, and we're going to go through B32 down through B43. We're going to choose our Consolidate button. We're going to remove any of the pieces that are already here. We're going to choose Averages and Create Link to Source Data, and then we're going to choose our References. We're going to go to Peoria and select cells B15 through B21 and add it together. Champagne, add it, and Roxford, and add it. We're going to hit OK. Next, we're going to come down to our cash balance at the beginning of the quarter. And we're going to go our data tab, data tools, consolidate. We're going to delete everything that's in here. And then we're going to choose average. And we're also going to do our references. First Peoria, then Champagne, then Roxford. And hit OK. So now we have a dynamic reference between both the cash flow for operations, the cash flow for investment and banking, and the cash balance at the beginning of the quarter. So we've expanded out those commands. You should see some plus symbols on the far left hand side now. And what these plus symbols do is give you a direct reference to the material. So I can see from my cash flow of operations where my, my information is coming from. Uh, 
I can see down here on cash balance at the beginning of the quarter, all of my information, the different cash flows. So we should have some numbers of 37,855, uh, 3,500, 45,004. You can see the numbers I have here. Now, one of the things that you should have seen on this is this little warning message that's popped up. And these cells aren't locked. So if someone comes in and wants to modify your data, um, these aren't protected. And so all that little warning is doing is telling you, hey, you have some really unprotected data here. Okay, we're now on to step 10, and we're going to insert and copy a hyperlink. So let's go ahead and click on cell D3 on the Peoria worksheet. So let's go down to Peoria, let's click on it, let's find cell D3. I'm going to use my address bar to jump straight to it. And I'm going to click and create a hyperlink that displays company averages and switches to cell A1 on the averages worksheet. So while on cell D3, I want to be able to click on this and it comes straight over to my worksheet. So I'm going to choose my insert tab and I'm going to choose to insert a hyperlink. Which is on my text, not text, I'm sorry, links grouping. And you can see a little globe with a chain link next to it, and that's called our hyperlink. You could also hit the Control and K button to get the same thing. So I'm going to choose to insert a hyperlink, and I'm going to do it into a place in this particular document. And the place I'm wanting to go is the company averages and switches to cell A1. So let's go to averages. And let's just go here. So we've clicked on hyperlink. You can see that I've clicked on the averages in the cash flow tab, and the cell I'm going to reference is cell A1. So let's go ahead and hit OK. So what this does now is when I click on it, it will take me directly to the averages tab in cell A1. Okay. So let's go ahead and cl right click on cell D3. So D3. And from here, we're going to copy and we're going to select the Champagne Sheet tab and paste the hyperlink in cell D3 on the Champagne Roxford. On the Champagne and Roxford. So let's go ahead and hit copy. Let's go here to Champagne, D3. We're going to paste this hyperlink. And then we're going to go to Roxford, D3, and we're going to paste the hyperlink again. Now what you should have now is on Peoria, Champagne, and Roxford, a clickable hyperlink. And so we are now on to step 10 and let's see, I think we're at 10F. We're going to go to the Peoria sheet. Peoria sheet. We're going to hit the escape button. So let's get rid of that hype or highlighted copy. And we're going to Remove the copy marquee as if it's still available. We're going to select cell D5. So let's go here to D and 5. D4, 5. Got to put this in the right place. And then let's go ahead and click on the hyperlink to test it out. And it brought me straight to where I needed to be. So let's go to Champagne and test it out again. Brought me to where I was supposed to be, uh, Roxford. And it brought me to where I was supposed to be. So our hyperlinks work all across the board. So at this point, we are going to be on step 11. We're going to save and close the workbook. So let's go ahead and file and save. I'm going to do a save as, make sure it's on the right place. Now, just looking at the instructions really quickly, I did make one mistake that I'm going to fix. You can see here, mine says averages uh, A1. It should have said company averages instead. So let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. So let's go ahead and right click on here and we're going to edit the hyperlink on the Peoria sheet. And I'm just gonna change this instead of averages A1, I'm gonna type in company average is. Make sure you put the S. And we're gonna hit okay. And you can see now it's back to company averages. And we're going to have to unfortunately do that for each of the links. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead back to Peoria. I'm going to select cell D3 with the right click. I'm going to copy it. Let's see. Go copy. And I'm going to come into Champagne and I'm going to paste each individual one of these. Okay. 
So I, that was a quick little fix of a mistake I made, but you can see it all working again. Let's go ahead and save this workbook, upload it, and see what kind of grade that we've made. So I've saved it. I'm closing it. I'm going to open up my SimNet environment. Let's get back into my students here. I'm going to upload my file. And let's go find that worksheet. Hit open. And let's see what kind of grade we got. And we got 100%. So again, if you follow along, you got a perfect score. That'll raise you up just a little bit. All right, guys, if you have any questions, comments about Chapter 5, SimNet Project 5-4, um, Excel 2016, let me know. I'll gladly help. Uh, this should walk you through all the problems, issues, and concerns, but sometimes I miss something or I don't explain it quite right. Again, the reason we did a couple of these items here, the static was because we want numbers not to change. Dynamic is because we want numbers to be able to update and change as needed when you're presenting it off to people. Now, I would strongly suggest if you're in a real world scenario that anything you time, anytime you do stuff like this, you lock your worksheets, you lock your materials so that people can't change the numbers for you, and then you make sure it's authorized here as well. All right, guys. I